have realized that look, most of our policies are not good for the country. Mm. And we have to be practical. So I believe in pragmatic approach instead of theory. So I go there and give typical examples just close by them, but then they don't know what they can do with it. I give them example. Do you know what we can use maize or corn for? And going around about 275 constituencies, except those of you who have opportunity to travel outside, that know that corn cooking oil, we can use corn as cooking oil, mm. and it's one of the most healthiest and expensive cooking oil mm. in the world. We grow corn or maize everywhere, even in our backyard here, but they don't know what to do with it, except of banku and, you know, porridge. Yeah, porridge and chewing, mm. you know, the toasted corn, mm. the whatever. So I tell them, you can use corn for conflicts, mm. Cyrillac. You can use corn for ethanol. And when you mix corn ethanol with our petrol, the cost of our petrol will go down by 20%. So why don't we take advantage of that? We can use corn for poultry feeds. But all these things, we are not doing and keep importing, importing, importing. Cassava. I have cassava plant. We've acquired about 125,000 acres. We've already planted or cultivated 30,000 feeding the plant. And what you can look, I always say, the youth of this country should listen to me, that cassava is more important than gold. So if we know the usage, we will not even degrade the lands because of gold. For one, we visited Thailand, a Greek ministry in Thailand. They line up the products that they use cassava for, from biscuit, tapioca, starch, ethanol, flour, a lot of things. So with my plant, do you know that the cassava we produce, uh, the starch we produce, you use it for drugs. All pharmaceutical industries, every drug they produce, there is starch in it. So the demand all over the world is so high that if we have about 300 cassava plant companies in Ghana, we we'll have demand all over the world. We can use the same cassava flour. We can use the cassava for ethanol. We can use the cassava for the tapioca, your banku, you eat, agbelema, and all those things. When you put them together, we can use cassava for 40 different products. Young man, here, when you open, you can plant cassava. So I give them practical examples. We use palm, the palm oil, to produce fritter oil, to produce soups, even the byproduct of the husk. When you go to Benso, for instance, they use the husk to generate electricity. You know, we got 30,000 acres to feed the plant. Mm -hmm. And my estimation, first 18 months, we should build the factory. And the same first 18 months, you cannot get cassava to plant 30,000 acres a year. It will be in batches. So six months, you cut it. Another six months, you cut it. So by the time you complete about 30,000, 40,000 acres, the plant is ready to feed the factory. So we are not going to go into agri without the agro-processing. Hell no, we are not going to do that. Another example, say, why should we always import fish into this country? Because June, July, August, the bumper harvest, the fishermen will cut the fish. They have no place to store it, to throw it back into the sea. So we need cold stores. But my brother, you don't need a cold store without a blast freeze machine. You need a blast freeze machine where it will blast freeze the fish at a lower temperature, minus 41 degrees, for, 20, uh, for 24 hours. And before you move it into the cold store, minus 12, minus 14. If you cut the fish and you store it straight, put it into the cold store, it will not meet international standards. All these things I told them in the committee. Do you know what one of the technical guys said? Yeah. Guy said, oh, 
we can smoke them. I say, Jesus Christ. They can smoke the, the fish. Yes. That is a safer way to Yeah, and them. this is a technical guy advising Kwashiga Minister of Agri. Can you imagine? So I've done a lot of things behind the scenes for us to change things. That is why I always do it for them to see that we can do it. I've realized that I cannot sit back and contribute, contribute, contribute when they don't listen. When I believe in what I'm saying. You see, I don't believe in the book, book, book. I believe in seeing it. I have been to so many countries in the world. And I've had several meetings. And let me tell you, my brother, I don't go into a meeting and talk about $50 million or $100 million. We talk billions. Companies that I've dealt with, they're always talking billions. And when they take you to the factories, their industries, for you to see what they've done, it gives me encouragement that, look, as a black man, a Ghanaian, I can also do it. So whatever I'm saying, I've seen it elsewhere that is working. That is why I believe in it. Like this steel plant that I'm building, about eight steel plant companies in Ghana here. And they are all foreigners. So I asked myself, ah, how can we sit here in our own country? The demand for iron rods and cement, where the cement is only Ibrahim who has come in as a Ghanaian. Everything is foreign. So no, if Ibrahim has gone into cement, I will go into steel. And trust me, the type of machines that I have brought into this country is in the whole West Africa, in terms of production, not the land size, but in terms of production, I'm the biggest in West Africa. No, so I challenge myself because I've seen it elsewhere. I've been to India. I see how it works. I've been to China. I see how things work. I've been to Thailand. I've been to Europe. I've been to America and all business. The best education any human being will have is exposure. You see, with all due respect to people who have learned and have so many degrees and everything, Sometimes, whatever they are writing, they have not even seen it working physically. But I have seen it. So exposure. You see, those Guineans who travel outside the country, see what they see over there. When they come, their perception to things change. change. So exposure is the best education any human being can have. So because of the exposure, the type of People have dealt with in terms of business. Sometimes they say, oh, Kenya Japan, he talks too big. Yeah. Yeah, he's too known. He's this and that. Let me give you an example. Is that why you started the campaign on Twitter, uh, show working? Where, <laughs> where you, there was a day that you basically profiled all that, like, I did this, I did that. People, did, people had zero idea about a lot of things. Yeah, because when you go out there and say, they think you are bragging. Mm. So I'll let you see. Sometimes, you passing by what I own, mm. but you don't know I'm the owner. Mm. I just keep quiet. But it's about time I have to encourage the youth to take their destiny into their own hands. Mm. I don't feel shy giving them my background. Mm. My background will encourage the youth that all is not lost. Then I show what I've been doing, capable of doing, coming from that humble beginning to where I am and where I want to go. I showcase all these things to motivate the youth of this country to take their destiny into their own hands. I go out there showcasing so that the perception that, oh, he's a braggart, is this. Well, I'll tell you what I've done. And if you go there and I've done it, am I a braggart? I said I'm going to do it. That's and I've done it. So what's your problem? Emulate Kenya Japan and you'll be successful. That is what I want to call, inculcate into the youth of this country.